Hey, welcome to church today. My name is Andrew. I'm the lead pastor. I want to thank everybody for coming. I want to thank everybody that is watching us on YouTube Live right now. Thank you for tuning in and whoever's going to listen to our podcast. Hey, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening and staying connected to this house. All right. We are in a series called Treasure Hunt. We are in part three. Uh, before we get into it today, um, we just finished a 21 days uh, of prayer and fasting, and we just, man, we have a lot of spiritual momentum going right now, um, and I just wanted to, to give some of the praise reports uh, on the board and, and some that we, we had come in over those last 21 days, just to encourage you um, what God is doing in this house. The, the first week uh, of the fast, someone was praying for their mom who had stage four cancer. Uh, she's completely healed. She went to the doctor. No, no cancer at all. None, zero. Um, we had someone get healed of diabetes. Uh, he, he went to the doctors this last week, and the doctor said to him, there's no sign that you ever even had diabetes. Like, like he was just baffled that what had happened to him. Um, my wife's heart got healed. Um, you had a mitral valve prolapse, and she's always had chest pain for, I don't know, forever. And uh, just th these last couple weeks, man, we were praying for her heart, and man, God healed her heart. Um, so awesome. Uh, we had someone who had really bad knees, pain in their knees, no pain any longer. Um, we had somebody... Uh, we had somebody who had a, a B B12 deficiency where they, as the farther the month went along, they got you know, more tired and more tired and, and their joints. By the end of the month, they were completely drained. Um, she got completely healed and she was dancing at the end of the month. Uh, man. And uh, a couple people got, got uh, delivered from nicotine. Like, come on, that's, if you've tried to quit smoking, you know that's a miracle. Uh, and, and for me, one of, the, one of the greatest things that has happened to us in this church is people falling in love with the Bible and, and deeply falling in love with Jesus. And, and man, having a prayer life and, and a devotional life, like, man, that's, that's why I get up here and, and, and I jump around and I scream and I shout and I encourage you, like, for you to just fall deeper in love with Jesus and the Word of God. And so, man, it's been an awesome 21 days. And, and I just, I continue to feel this spiritual momentum. And so I'm going to preach a message today, okay, that I would not have preached a year ago because we weren't ready to hear something like this. And, and I just believe that, man, we are on the cusp of seeing God do something incredibly special. I talk to pastors all of the time, and, and I talked to this one pastor, he's been in ministry for 20 years, and he hasn't seen the type of miracles that we've experienced in his 20 years in ministry that we've experienced in 21 days. And so, man, the Holy Spirit is moving. The Holy Spirit is stirring. And I believe that we're on the cusp of something really, really special. And so today, part three of Treasure Hunt, the title of the message is Treasure the Fragile Clay Jar. Come on, let's pray. Father, I thank you for this moment. I thank you for every person that's in here. Holy Spirit, we just take this moment to honor you, to honor your presence, to honor your power. Father, we just pray that today would be all about you. Holy Spirit, open our hearts and our minds to hear what you have in store for us. We, we just pray away all distraction that we would be focused for the next 30 minutes. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. amen. And amen. Let's jump right into the word, 2 Corinthians 4, 7. This is the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul says this, We now have this light shining in our hearts, but we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. Come on, isn't, it, isn't that great? Like, we're, we're these fragile clay jars jars containing the greatest treasure in the whole universe, that is the Holy Spirit. He says, this makes it clear that our great power is from God and not from ourselves. I, I love the imagery. I love the imagery of a jar. This isn't a jar. This is 
a glass. Um, but it's a container, right? And, and so, and it's a fragile container. If I took this outside on the sidewalk and threw it down, it would smash, right? It, it would completely smash. And, and it's interesting if you think about our bodies, right? The older we get, the weaker and more fragile we get, right? We're, we're, we're these fragile clay jars. Don and I, we're starting to talk about this, um, unfortunately, uh, the older we get. Uh, I was walking out of church one night, and I, I, I stepped off the curb wrong, and I sprained my ankle. And I'm like, in 20 years, that ankle's going to snap. I need to be more careful, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, like, and, and we think about that. The older we get, the more fragile we become and, and the weaker our bodies become. Yet God has chosen us to display his glory, this, this, this treasure that's inside of us. And I love this illustration that we're like a container. I love this illustration that we're like a container. John 7, 38 through 39, this is what Jesus says should go in this container. Now, Jesus stands up and, he, and he's preaching before this, this huge crowd. He says this, anyone who believes in me may come and drink. For the scriptures declares rivers of living water will flow from his heart. When he said living water, he was speaking of the spirit who would be given to everyone believing in him. But the Spirit had not yet been given because Jesus had not yet entered into his glory. So Jesus hadn't died yet, come back from, from the grave, right? The Holy Spirit hadn't come uh, inside of us yet. But what Jesus is saying is Paul saying that we're a container, and Jesus is saying, let me get my living water. Jesus is saying it's the Holy Spirit is like living water, and when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, He pours living water inside of us. Peter said this in the book of Acts 2, 32 through 33. He says, God raised Jesus from the dead, and we are all witnesses of this. Now, now don't, don't skip over this, okay? Peter Peter was at the mount when Jesus ascended into heaven. There was about 500 people there. 120 of those 500 people are in the upper room when they experience the wind, the pneuma of God, right? The Holy Spirit coming inside of them. And so they were actual witnesses. They watched Jesus die on the cross and ascend into heaven. Now he exalted to the place of the highest honor in heaven at God's right hand and the father as he had promised gave him the holy spirit to do what to pour to pour out upon us just as you see and hear today and so man God is pouring out pour he's pouring his holy spirit in us every single day but here's the thing, this, this great treasure that, that we contain inside of us, this great treasure is not just for us to keep locked away. King David says this in Psalms uh, 23, verse 5, he says, you prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. Whenever we see this in the Old Testament, this is uh, the representation of the Holy Spirit coming upon somebody. He says, you honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessing. Okay, let's see if I can do this without making a mess. I don't know. I'm going to have to move my phone. Don't look at that. Okay. I got, uh, you, you probably can't see this. It's Captain Hook. He needs Jesus. Harley Quinn, she really needs Jesus. The Riddler. Robin. Okay. This is us. We're, we're this vessel. 
that, that, that the Holy Spirit, the living water, God is pouring in us. But David says, David says, look, 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 look. it's not just for us. We're, God is not just blessing us to be a blessing so we can hoard the blessings of God. No, 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 no. What God wants to do to us is he wants to fill us with overflowing. And look what happens. Look what happens when we begin to overflow. Harley Quinn gets some. Come on. The Riddler gets some. Captain Hook gets some. Come on. Robin is getting some. Man, when when we allow the Holy Spirit to overflow in our daily lives, people all around us experience this incredible treasure that God has placed inside of us. And yes, we're weak and we're fragile vessels, but that makes it even more special right? Man, that when we're going through difficulty and, and struggles and we can relate to, to these people in our lives, yes, man, I'm going through a hard time, but man, the Holy Spirit is overflowing. Peace is still overflowing in my life. Joy is still overflowing in my life. Even though I'm struggling financially. I still believe God's going to come through. Even though my marriage is on the rocks, I still believe that God is going to restore it. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is flowing. The Holy Spirit is flowing. Boom. They got knocked down by the Spirit. Come on. And that, that's why God gives us this living water. It is the greatest treasure, the treasure of the Holy Spirit. But it's not just for us to experience peace. It's just not for us to experience comfort. But it's the people that are in our lives that God wants us to overflow so that they can experience the love of God through your overflow, so they can experience the joy of the Lord, right? Last week, I talked about walking in the joy of the Lord, right? No matter how bad the week was, I'm going to walk in to church with the joy of the Lord. I'm going to walk into work on Monday with the joy of the Lord, Because the Spirit is overflowing in me. Because these people all around me need to experience this treasure that God has placed in me. All right. Don't spill. Don't spill. I spilled. (laughs) I want to transition for the rest of our time this morning to Ezekiel. And it's Ezekiel 47, and in this passage, it's this incredible prophecy. It's this incredible prediction, and I believe it is a message to us today, today's church, of what can happen if we become these vessels that allow the Holy Spirit to overflow in our lives. Come on, let's, let's read it. Ezekiel 47, 1 through 2. Now, in this vision that he's getting, this angel is with Ezekiel, and he's showing him all of these things. Like He's downloading him. And so he, he, he's experiencing this vision with this angel. Let's read it. He says, in my vision, the man brought me back to the entrance of the temple. Now, in this passage, this is kind of a, a twofold example. One, the temple represents the church. Okay, the the temple represents the church, but the temple also represents you and me. There I saw a stream flowing east from beneath the door of the temple and passing to the right of the altar on its south side. The man brought me outside the wall through the north gateway and led me around to the eastern entrance. There I could see the water flowing out through the south side of the east gateway. So Ezekiel is with this angel and he's looking at the outside of the temple and he's noticing this this, this stream of water flowing out 
from the temple, right? And you're thinking, you know, is a, is a toilet overflowing? Did a, did a pipe burst, right? No, we just talked about what water represents. It represents the living water, right? It represents the Holy Spirit in, in this passage, right? And so he notices that the water is running out of the temple. Now, remember, the temple is also us. I want to show you 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20. Paul says this. He says, don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God. You do not belong to yourself, for God bought you with a high price. So you must honor God with your body. And so not only is, is, is Ezekiel and this angel talking about the church, that, that the Holy Spirit right, should be going out from the church, but it's also a representation of how we should live our life how the Holy Spirit should be overflowing out of our life because our bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit. Let's continue. Measuring as he went, he took me along the stream for 1,750 feet and then led me across. The water was up to my ankles. He measured off another 1,750 feet and led me across again. This time, the water was up to my knees. After another 1,750 feet, it was up to my waist. Then he measured another 1,750 feet, and the river was too deep to walk across. It was deep enough to swim in, but too deep to walk through. Now, if you were to read this passage like on a daily devotional sometime, you'd probably be like, Okay, weird. Um, uh, next chapter, right? Right? Next chapter. Um, but in this, man, in this, in these three things that, that this angel shows Ezekiel, I believe is a way that, one, we can build our church off of, but also build our own life off of. Okay? So the first thing, right? He's walking with this angel, right? The first thing that happened, he steps into the stream, right? He steps into the stream, right? It represents the living water, represents the Holy Spirit, and it's up to his ankles, right? He, he's walking in it, and it's up to his ankles. The ankles represent the foundation that we live on, right? It's attached to our foot, and that is our foundation. And here at Passionate Life Church, our foundation is built on the Bible, our lives have to be built on Scripture, have to be built on the book that has lasted generations after generations, the book that was inspired by the Holy Spirit when the Word became flesh, right? Our lives have to be built on the Scripture, right? Our church has to be built on scripture. And I think about, I think about the foot. I, I think about the ankle. Uh, anybody ever blow out their Achilles tendon? Anybody? Yeah. Hurts bad, right? Hurts. And uh, you can't walk for like six months, right? You can't walk for six months. It's a long recovery. And, and many times, listen to this, many times Satan, and, and usually it's in the beginning, the beginning of our walk with God, he tries to crack that foundation. He tries to break up that foundation and he will attack our Achilles heel. And I've seen it so many times where, man, someone will be getting it. Man, they'll, they'll, be, man, they'll be on fire for Jesus. They'll, they'll start reading their Bible and one thing happens to their life. One attack to their heel happens and I won't see them for six months. This is what Satan does. I mean, he's trying to get in. He's, he's trying to crack up the foundation. He's trying to attack your Achilles heel to stop us from walking. We've got to keep that foundation. We've got to keep building that foundation on the Word of God. So the second thing, the second thing that the angel shows Ezekiel as he's walking, right? All of a sudden, he's still walking in a stream. The stream is up to his knees, Right? The stream is up to his, his knees. Now, knees, to me, represent running, right? Running. You use your knees to run. If you've if you ever blown out your knee, you can't run. You're not going to be running, right? And, and I believe in, in this passage that, that, that God is showing us that, man, we don't need to run away from God, but we need to run to him. When things get hard, when things get difficult... 
We need to run to God and not away from him. And then the other thing, what do we do with our knees? What do we do with our knees, right? We surrender them to God when we bow and pray to him, right? We're, we're surrendering our knees to God. We're not running away from God. We're running to him when, when we're in difficulty and struggle. And what we're doing when we, we, we pray, we are surrendering our knees to God. Man, we build our life on the foundation of Scripture. Man, we surrender our knees to God. And I believe, pertaining to, to our church, I believe that we're somewhere between the ankle and the knee. I think we're right at the shin. And, 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 and we're, we're getting it. We're, man, we had so many great prayer times throughout the fast and the Wednesday night prayer and Thursday night prayer, we're, we're, we're starting to get, we're starting to understand, man, I need to surrender every situation to God. I need to surrender my knees to God before I go to a relationship, before I go to a substance, before I go to money, before I go to anything else. I'm going to run towards God, not away from Him. I'm going to surrender my life to Him through prayer. Come on, we build a foundation. We surrender to God. And number three, the waste, right? All of a sudden, it's, it's waste level, right? All of a sudden, he's in, he's in waste, and he calls it, he doesn't call it a stream anymore, he calls it a river, right? He, he, he doesn't call it a stream anymore, he's in the river. You ever try to go up against current, right? You're, you're kind of like, like, it's difficult, and you're kind of out of control, That's what I believe God wants us to do. He wants us to release control. Fully release control to him. Everything, right? We build our foundation on, on scripture. We surrender our knees to prayer. We run to God, not away from him. And then we release full control to him. And this is what it looks like when we release full control to God. Instead of going against the current, what happens <laughs> is we, we go with the current. We go with the flow of the Holy Spirit. Right? It's almost like a lazy river. Do you know what I'm saying? When, and, and so many people are like, man, it's so hard to follow God. No, it's not. Not if you build your life on the foundation of Jesus Christ and the Scripture. Not if you surrender your life to Him and then you release control. You're, on, you're in the current of the Holy Spirit and you're willing to go. You're not fighting against it. You're not resisting it. You're in it. And you're saying, God, lead me, guide me. Wherever I want to, wherever you want me to go, I'm going to go. I'm on this lazy river with you. Now, there's some, there's some, I don't, there's some bumps, right? And there's some, you know, waves that you might have to go through but you've surrendered. You've given God control. And when you've given God control, guess what else leaves? Worry, anxiety, stress. Because no matter what you're going through, you're in the current. You're in the current of the Holy Spirit. You're going with the flow. I didn't drink water after that one. And I believe there's coming a time where this church, we're, we're, we're getting close, where we're allowing the Holy Spirit to flow in our lives, to flow in worship, to flow in prayer, and to flow in the Word of God, to flow in our daily lives. Our lives need to be built on Scripture. We need to surrender in prayer. We need to release control and go with the current of the Holy Spirit. Let's continue. Ezekiel 47, 6 through 8. He asked me, have you been watching, son of man? Remember last week we talked about distraction, right? He's like, hey, are you paying attention? 
right? When God was showing uh, uh, Elijah, right, the, the whisper, the gentle whisper, he, he sends him, you know, you know, some fire and an earthquake and a windstorm. He's like, hey, you paying attention? Stop getting distracted. I know your attention span is eight seconds, okay? So look at me, right? The angel's like, are you paying attention to me? Then he led me back along the riverbank. When I returned, I was surprised, look at this, by the sight of many trees growing on both sides of the river. Then he said to me, the river flows east through the desert. Come on, it's a, it's a river now. Come on, it's flowing with current into the valley of the Dead Sea. The waters of the stream will make the salty waters of the Dead Sea fresh and pure. Okay, the Dead Sea is 10 times the salt level as the ocean. Nothing lives in the Dead Sea. That's why it's called the Dead Sea, right? Like there's nothing that lives in the Dead Sea. And, and, and what is, man, what is this angel showing Ezekiel? He's saying, hey, bro, my, my church at some point when they are built on the foundation of God, his holy scripture, man, when they surrender in prayer, man, when they release control and let the Holy Spirit flow, dead things are going to come to life. And, and, and I believe the, the, the east side of the city was where all the heathens lived. Like, like all, I mean, all the dead people lived spiritually, right? And so what I believe that God is speaking to us is, man, he wants the current of the Holy Spirit to even flow into downtown Denver. Come on, somebody. Yeah. <laughs> We're talking about a dead place, you know what I mean? And he said, it will flow out of my church, this river of living water. Listen, I believe God wants to bring a revival to our city. A revival is when God brings dead Christians back to life. Christians that have been sitting on the back pew doing nothing. He wants to bring them back to life. He wants to give them fresh life and new life. And then he wants to do other things. He wants to do an awakening. He wants to awake, uh, he wants to awake people that are spiritually sleeping, that, that do not know God at all. And so when this river is flowing, this current is flowing through our, our communities and our cities, man, God's going to be yelling. He's going to be touching people, bringing dead things to life. Let's continue. There will be swarms of living things wherever the water of this river flows. Fish will abound in the Dead Sea, for its waters will become fresh. Life will flourish wherever this water flows. Remember, we're the living water. Th th think about that for your own life. That means when you go into your work that might be a dark place, you might go into your school that might be a dark and dead place, guess what? You can bring life to it. And anything you touch can come to life because you have this amazing treasure that is living inside of you. It is living water that wants to outpour and bring dead things to life. Let's continue. Fishermen will stand along the shores of the Dead Sea all the way from En Gedi to Englam. The shores will be covered with nets drying in the sun. Fish of every kind will fill the Dead Sea just as they fill the Mediterranean. But the marshes and swamps will not be purified. This will they will st still be salty. I think that's Florida. Florida's just going to stay salty. <laughs> salty people. Continue. <laughs> Fruit trees of all kinds will grow along both sides of the river. The leaves of these trees will never turn brown and fall, and there will always be fruit on their branches. There will be a new crop every month, for they are watered by the river flowing from the temple. The fruit will be for food, and the leaves for healing. 
fruit and healing, right? Jesus says, by our fruit, he will know us. It is, it is the fruit of the Spirit that, that these people will experience, right? It, it, it's, it's the overflow that these people will experience. It's the fruit of the Holy Spirit. When you, you come to work or, or, or you hang out with your friends or, or you're at school or wherever you are and, and you, they can experience the love of Jesus through you. They can experience the joy of the Lord through you. They can experience the peace through you. That's what this angel is showing Ezekiel. Man, if my people will just surrender, if my people will just give up control and let me flow, man, I want to do something. Man, Jesus came so nobody would perish. Like, that's the goal for God. He's got a way higher goal than we do. He wants everybody saved. He wants everybody to experience the grace of Jesus Christ. And we're, we're these treasures. And yes, we're fragile, and we can be shattered, and we can be broken. But we serve a God that can put us back together. We, we carry around the greatest treasure of all time. And that is this, this living spirit of God that lives inside of us, that brings dead things to life. Come on, open your treasure today. Open your treasure chest today. Come on, let the Holy Spirit flow in your life. Let the, hand out the fruit at work on Monday, okay? Hand out the fruit. Hand out the fruit at school on Monday. To your family today at the Super Bowl party. Let the spirit flow. I'm telling you, many times our actions are even more powerful than our words. And that people can just feel Feel the Spirit of God in you. Come on. These treasures were never meant to be just for us. They were meant to share with everybody in our lives. Come on, let's bow our heads and close our eyes this morning. Maybe you'd say today, Pastor, I've never said yes to the living water. I've never said yes to Jesus. I've never had the Holy Spirit living in me. And I want to. I want that. I want that gift today. Or maybe you've, you've ran away from God and you've been away for a while and, and today you, you, you ended up in this church and you heard this message and you felt God stirring in you that you need to come back, that you need to surrender to him today. Every head bowed and every eye closed. If that's you, just slip up a hand. I just want to pray with you this morning. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. I would just ask that we'd all say this prayer this morning as we help those making the greatest decision of their life today. Dear Jesus, I thank you for what you did on the cross. And I ask this morning that you would forgive me of all my sin that you would come into my life and be my Lord and King. And from this day forward, I will follow you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, let's give them a hand clap today. Heaven is rejoicing.